Hi guys, okay, so this is where we get to things getting a bit more complicated, where we have combinations and permutations. So these are the formulae we're given in the formula booklet. This one's for combinations, this one's for permutations. It's, it's um, pretty clear, it's in section 1.10. And I'm gonna just kind of explain what these are through this introduction here. So consider an Olympic final 100 meter race with eight participants let's call them a b c d e f g and h right so these are my eight people in how many different ways can the three medals be awarded okay so let's have a think about that we we have if we go back to our and our, our product principle or our and rule here i have first gold medal, silver medal, and bronze medal. How many people can win the gold medal? Well, the answer is eight. Or let me put it here, eight. Once I have someone who's won the gold, how many people are left to win the silver? Well, it's seven, so it's eight times seven. And similarly, how many are left then to win the bronze? Six. So. How many, in how many different ways can the three medals be awarded? This is my answer. Eight times seven times six. And the answer to that is, let me just try and figure that out. 56 times six is 300, 336. That's how many different, that's a lot of different combinations. There's a lot of different, uh, different ways that, they, that the three medals can be awarded. So, um, how did I do that? Well, I showed you how I, how I did it, but how does it relate to this? So this is what permutations are. And a per permutation is an arrangement. Where I could have asked, well, instead of saying in how many different ways, I could have said, how many permutations are there? Um, so the way this formula works is, so N, P, R, what that means is eight, it's eight P three. It's like it's eight permute three. Or how many how many ways can can we arrange three people out of eight? That's essentially what it's saying. Um and eight P three is equal to three hundred and thirty six. Now it's the way it relates to this formula is look, it's a bit and if you remember our lesson on the algebra of factorials, this is eight factorial. 8 factorial over n minus r, which is 5 factorial, is 8 minus 3, 8 minus 3 factorial, which is 8 factorial over 5 factorial, which is 8 times 7 times 6. So this is this formula, and that's the, that's the easier one of the two, in my opinion. By the way, if this video gets long, which it may do, I, I'll just, um, I'll break it into into two videos. Okay, so um, that's permutations. That's what it is. The second situation, which is the second question, in how many ways can you choose three people from the eight? Now, that's slightly different because here, when, there, when we're looking at the different, the different ways we can uh, award the medals, right? You could have, you could have A, B, and C. That's your winner, that's your second, that's your third. But you could also have A, C, and B. And they are two different ways. So they count as two different ways when we're when we're using this, this permutations formula. You could also have B, A, C, and B, C, A, or even C, A, B, and C, B, A. So what we actually have here is a situation where in these 336, you actually have six, you actually have six different combinations or outcomes that are the same three people. And this is the big, well, this is the only difference between permutations and combinations. This is, this is how they're different. Combinations doesn't take order into, into account. So when I'm looking at combinations, if I say in how many ways can you choose three people from, from eight, 
So imagine there's just you and your seven friends. There's eight of you. How many ways can I choose three of you? It's not like the, the order doesn't matter. A, B, C. If I want three people to help me, if I say three people come here with me, please. Um, it's the same as if I say A, B, and C come here, or A, C, and B come here, or C, A, and B. It's the same. It's I just have three people. So that's the difference. Um, permutations, order matters. Combinations, order doesn't matter. So when I'm looking at my combinations, what I do is same kind of thing. I have my my eight times seven times six. But here's the difference. There's actually because of this situation, there's actually six times more people in this. So in this 336, there's six times more people than what I want. Because here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the same for any of the three that you take. So if I take A, D, and F, I have the same problem or same things happening. I have six different combinations. So I need to divide by six. And instead of dividing by six, I'm actually dividing by three times two times one. Because how many ways are there of of arranging these three people? Well, it's three factorial. So I end up with, um, okay, let me get rid of this. So I have, I have, uh, well, basically the sixes cancel and I'm left with 56. So N choose, sorry, eight choose, eight choose three, and that's what the C stands for, choose. Eight choose three is, 56 and 8 permute 3, if that's the right way to say it, is um, 336. So, yeah, how does this relate to my formula where, well, let's have a look at this. I have um, 8 choose 3 is equal to my n factorial, which is my 8 factorial, divided by my n minus r factorial, which is the same as this, same thing as this, 8 minus 3 factorial. But I also, I also divide by or factorial, but that's this thing. I need to divide by um, or factorial because that's how many, that's how many um, combinations of the three that I don't want or that I've that many, I've that many too, too much, if that makes sense. So I also divide by three factorial and that's 56. Okay. That's the introduction. Now I'm just going to kind of do a lot of questions. Or actually, before I do the questions, I'm going to do those on the calculator to show you how it works. So a few places, we, well, two places I can find them. One is menu, probability, permutations and combinations are here. The other place is in this, if I press control book. No, it's not even control book. It's just the book. If I just press the book here, this thing comes up. And in, in this one here, I have, well, I, look, I've actually scrolled down already. You scroll down to probability, you'll get them there. Okay, I'm going to actually go this way. So probability, let's do permutations. So my permutations, and this is on this calculator, this is how you do it. You do NPR, and then you do 8, 3 and I get 336. And then the choose one, probability, combinations, eight, comma three, 56. There you go. Okay, I have seven examples here. Again, I'm not sure if I will break this into two lessons or not. Let's just assume I won't. So I'll try and do it fairly quickly. In how many ways can five objects be selected from nine? Okay, so what's important that we need to look out for in these questions is, does the order matter? So when he says, in, in how many ways can five objects be selected from nine? No, the order doesn't matter. Now you could actually, you could argue, well, do you mean exactly the way he's selecting them? But no, that's not what that's not what he means here. That's like if I ch if I choose five. Imagine there's nine. I have nine players in my squad, and I need it's a five aside football match. How many how many ways can I pick five people to play in the game? So it's just nine choose five. 
answer is, um, let's do it this way now, combinations, and it is 9,5, 126, easy. And that's all you have to write down for, for your working. If it's a paper one, yes, you've to use the formula, but I'm not going to do that for this lesson. In, because it's easy. In how many ways can four objects be selected from six and seven objects be selected from five? Okay, so look, four from six, that's my six, choose four, and, where's my and word, and, what do we do with and? Multiply, seven from 10, so that's 10, choose seven. Um, this thing, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna copy this, Make it easier for me. Um, six choose four. Six, six choose four. Multiply by. Multiply by ten. Choose seven. One thousand eight hundred. Exactly. Nice. One thousand eight hundred. Okay. In the Irish Lotto, you need to correctly choose six numbers from 47. What is the probability of winning the lotto? I think I mentioned this in a previous lesson, but anyway, I have to choose six numbers. Again, order doesn't matter here. So it's just 47, choose six. 47, choose six. 47, comma six. All right, this is, there's a lot. So it's... 10 million seven three seven five seven three ten million seven three seven five seven three so look this the point i was making i think in, in the lesson whenever i mentioned this is if it costs one euro to play and the prize is like two million euros it's not a good investment to play the lotto because the the actually the question here is what is the probability of winning? So actually I should I need to say there I need to say therefore probability of winning is one out of one out of ten million seven hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred and seventy three. So unless the prize is more than ten million, I don't want to play. Okay. Next question. A football team consists of a goalkeeper, four defenders, four midfielders, and two forwards. A manager has three goalkeepers, six defenders, seven midfielders, and four forwards. In how many ways can he pick the team? Okay, so we need um, we need to choose one goalkeeper out of three. So this is three, choose, three, choose, one. By the way, um, how, many way how many ways can I choose one person out of three or out of anything? Well, it's just going to be three. One, the way, the amount of way... The number of ways I can choose one person out of 20 is 20. Um, and also, by the way, the number of ways that you can choose zero people out of three would also be one. There's one way to choose zero people. Okay. Um, so three choose one. Then we have six. So it's going to be times because it's this. I need this and I need this and I need this and I need this. So three choose one times defenders. I need to six defenders and I need to choose four times seven midfielders and I need to choose also four and then four forwards four forwards and I need to choose two all multiplied together this gives me um, three choose one now that's just three by the way, but whatever. Multiply it by um, six, choose four. Multiply it by seven, seven, choose four. Multiply it by four, four, choose two. Press enter, nine, four, five, Oh, nine, four, five, oh. So there's 9,450 different ways that he can choose a team, right? So, yeah, that's that seems it's a bit like my ch shirt and tie example. If someone asks you to guess how many different teams he could pick, considering those those 
restraints on the on that he has to pick four defenders, four midfielders, and two forwards. He still has nine thousand four hundred fifty different teams he could play. So imagine that in a in a like a Premier League squad when they've like twenty players, even more. Okay, next one. A basketball coach has to choose a team of five players from a squad of 11. In how many ways can he choose the team if Michael has to be on it, right? Michael Jordan, he has to be on the team. So think about it. Michael is now on the team. So how many diff how many more players do I need to choose from? So, well, the answer is four. And how many players am I choosing four from? Well, it's not 11, it's 10, because Michael is now not in the 11, so there's only 10 players left. So it's 10, choose 4. So that's a little tricky one. 10, choose 4. Um, I know this is a bit annoying. 10, choose 4. 210. So there's 210 ways to do it. Second last one. How many... So look, notice those are all the choose examples I put them first the next two are permutations examples how many how many four digit pins can be formed from digits one to nine if no digit can be repeated okay so like this this situation so imagine here I have Michael imagine imagine I have Michael and then a, B, C, D, E, F, G, up to 11, whatever. So I could have Michael, A, B, C, and D, plus Michael. Or if I had A, C, B, and D, which is a slightly different vari variation, plus Michael, they're the same team. So the order just doesn't matter how I choose them. That This basketball team is the same as this basketball team. We're not, we weren't talking about pos what position they're playing or anything like that. So this is just... Um, 10 choose four however this one four digit pin how many four digit pins so you're going to have one two three four can be formed from digits one to nine if no digit can be repeated well at this time imagine you have a, a pin um, imagine your pin is one two three four well that's a different pin to four three two one this pin will work this pin won't work so the order does matter here. So I need to choose um, P. I need to do nine because there's nine. I have nine different digits. So I need to do nine P four. And that equals, let's get it here. Probability permutations, nine choose four, 3,024, 3,024 different pins. Now look, if, it's worth noting if the digits can be repeated, which is more often the case, it's just nine times nine times nine times nine. So there's a lot more. There are a lot more um, combinations. Last example. Three, letter, three letters are chosen from the word triangle and arranged in order. So note there's, there's no, all the, all the letters are different in the word triangle and arranged in order how many arrangements exist so again arranged in order so this time t or i is different to i or t because it says in order so this time it's p well it's p again so it is how many letters do i have one two three four five six seven eight so it's eight permute three i think i did that one before didn't i one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight choose three. I actually did it. Or eight permute three. Eight times seven is six. Three hundred and thirty-six equals three hundred and thirty-six. Okay. And last question: How many arrangements exist that contain at least one vowel? Okay. The easiest way to do this is to kind of look at. Well, let's look at how many how many arrangements exist that contain no vowels and then we'll do 336 minus that and that way we'll have at least one vowel that's often the case in the questions that say at least one we'll find out the probability that there's zero and then you just do one minus that well probability or number of arrangements whatever the case may be so 
how many combinations will have no vowels? Well, look, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five letters, five constants that are um, not vowels. So one, two, three, four, five. So I, if I do five P three, this is my way of finding out how many different arrangements exist. Um, th or three letter arrangements out of five. So let's do that five P three. Um, let's do this probability permutations five comma three 60. This equals 60. Therefore, the, the number of com the number of ranges that contain at least one vowel has to be 336 minus 60 equals um, 276. So this is how many combinations um, contain at least one vowel. Okay, that's, um, that's kind of, that's a long lesson, yes, but um, certainly you need to know how to do each of those questions. I am, I am going to do more more lessons. I think I'm doing two more lessons, one where we where we look at objects grouped together, and then another lesson where I just I'm just going to do a few, um, tricky questions like different like past paper questions, and um, that kind of brings together all the different things that you've learned. Okay, so I'll see you in the next in the next lessons.